Welcome back to the CUSA Showcase. Well, three teams in Conference USA remain unbeaten, but we'll start with Houston. 2-0 and in league play, a chance to go 3-0. and They face SMU this week. Now this one, a battle of the running backs. Well, yeah, first of all, you got to talk about Houston. The fact they started the season 0-3, they had a bye week. Tony Levine telling me last week it came at the perfect time. You were able to move some players around, even move some coaches around. They have really kicked it in since then. But everybody has this idea that you talk about SMU's offense, you talk about Houston's offense, all they do is throw the ball around all over the place. Not the case. You look at Houston, they're pretty balanced, and a lot of their success depends on their run game, <clears throat> obviously with Charles Sims. Same thing with SMU. Zach Line, if he doesn't run the football, it's going to be a long night, obviously, for the Mustangs. Now let's talk about one of the other undefeated teams, <clears throat> Tulsa, sitting at 4-0 right now. They will face Rice this week. Now, Tulsa, it kind of <clears throat> seems as though their whole offense is coming together. They have mm -hmm. Cody Green, but do they need him to perform when they have the terrific trio in the backfield? So you have them. Is the Owls' improved defense, can they stop them? I, I don't know if, if Rice can obviously stop them because Cody Green – Okay, I'm the president of his fan club. Everybody gives me grief about that, but I've seen the young man start to progress even more and more, and I think he's getting more and more confidence. But when you have those running backs that Tulsa has, you have Trey Watts. Boom, boom, boom. Bang, he's gone. You have guys that can bang the ball with Alex Singleton. Anytime inside of five yards, he's going to get the football. You throw in Cody Green's running ability. It's a potent offense, but then you look at Tulsa's defense. They are outstanding versus the run game. They're going to be tough to beat, I think, the rest of the season. Absolutely. This one's going to be a tough one. Well, let's continue on. ECU, they face UAB now. ECU, another team that we talked about their offense coming together. Shane Carden obviously having a career day mm -hmm. last week. He's got some receivers to throw to now. 6'8", Justin Jones. He can pretty much grab anything in the end zone. Does UAB have the defense, as we talked about this, to stop another potent offense? Well, you look at, obviously, at UAB's cornerbacks, and I don't think they can stop Justin Jones. Justin Jones was a kid last year, had to play with a cast on his wrist, hurt his wrist, didn't really live up to potential. This season, he's finding himself. And, and part of being a young receiver, you have to learn how to run routes. Just because you're 6'8", you got good hands, doesn't make you a good receiver. I think he and Shane Carden have a great connection. Carden coming off five touchdown passes. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Shane Jane Carden, I thought he didn't start the season as the starter, but I felt at that time that he would obviously move into that starting position he has. Ruffin McNeil, Lincoln Riley, their offensive coordinator, they have a lot of confidence in this guy. I like him. I think it's going to be tough for UAB. Well, now let's talk about Southern Miss. Oh, so close last week yeah. as they faced UCF, <laughs> top team in the East. Now they have the task of facing Marshall, another extremely yeah. <laughs> potent offense. Rakeem Cato takes that first place nationally ranked spot in passing offense. Can Southern Miss stop the offense? Well, here's the problem with this game is you have an emotional Southern Miss team that played so well last week, losing in double overtime, and now they go down. Now they got to come right back up and try to get up emotionally. On the other hand, you have Marshall. They had a week off. They get a week off, Cato takes over first place in conference as far as throwing the football. So it's going to be tough, I think, emotionally for Southern Miss. And I think the coaches have a challenge to have those guys forget about the last game. Let's go play Marshall. But Marshall's had time to heal. They've had a chance to self-scout themselves. It's going to be a, a, a very tough game, I think, right now for poor Southern Miss. Let's take a look at the rest of Conference USA football schedule.